My name is Charles Lane and um, I'm a private landowner and I live here at Willtown Bluff Plantation uh, that my father first acquired uh, a piece of in 1946. So it's been in our family for 74 years. I'm a passionate outdoorsman, um, a duck hunter, fly fisherman, bird watcher, lover of nature, lover of the outdoors. Um, and I helped start the Ace Basin. I'm one of many people. Well, we're on the banks of the Edisto River, um, which is one of three rivers, um, the others being the Cumbee and the Ashipu, that make up what we call the Ace Basin. 30 years ago, that acronym was not used. Uh, this was simply the undeveloped area between Charleston, South Carolina, and Beaufort, South Carolina. But development from Hilton Head, Kiowa, began to encroach on this area. And my father and some of his friends, notably Gaylord Donnelly, felt that if we didn't do something, uh, this area would just ultimately be diminished, as we've seen all up and down the East Coast. Uh, this is a very ecologically rich area. Uh, it's important primarily to birds. Um, and it has a very fascinating history because what we're looking at back before Europeans came would have been all freshwater tidal Tupelo Cypress Swamp. And with the help of slave labor from Africa, this was transformed into tidally influenced rice fields with impoundments. We still have 70,000 acres of the historic rice fields intact. They're all preserved and they're all being managed for birds. We weren't looking to create a big park system or a biosphere reserve. We, were we had no money, so we really were looking to the goodwill of, of private landowners. Well, that goodwill came and it got supported by the Fish and Wildlife Service, our state wildlife agencies, Ducks Unlimited, Nature Conservancy, and now a myriad of small land trusts. And collectively, we've protected over 301,000 acres with a new goal of protecting 400,000 acres. And it's really caught wind. And, and the momentum has not loosened up at all. Our task force now has 25 members, it started with five. Back in 1995, there were five conservation easements in, in the Ace Basin, and then now 274 conservation easements. We do have a refuge, we have an estuarine research reserve, we have state wildlife management areas but they're dwarfed by what the private landowners have been able to do. Forty years ago, wood storks were visitors in, in this part of the world. And sometime around 1960, they started to breed here. And ultimately, by the mid-70s, the entire population of wood storks was dependent on the nesting success the birds had here. They had literally left Florida. Uh, and they did it because the hydrology of Florida had been changed because of agriculture and human consumption of water. And here, the birds benefited from the manipulation of these managed wetlands, former rice fields. And it's gratifying when you can see a bird like that take advantage of the habitat that it wasn't really uh, designed to take advantage of because it didn't exist as it evolved in, in Florida. And now that bird is off the endangered species list and we're able to, quote, engineer a system that benefits those birds. We're seeing so many different species of birds now, and these are not occasional sightings of birds. The black-bellied whistling duck, which is basically a Central American bird, and some in Florida and Texas, is now here in abundance year-round. Uh, the roseate spoonbills, you can go back and look at the old birding books in the 1910s and how excited the birders were when they would see one and now we see them all the time. They're here, they're abundant. White pelicans, which is a bird of the Gulf Coast in the West, are now here taking advantage of these managed wetlands. And so I think there are about a dozen species of birds that we rarely saw that now are common uh, in our ecosystem. So if you talk about being Lucky, you talk about being optimistic. I mean, this is the epicenter of optimism uh, because it was all amateurs that, that said, this is in my backyard and it isn't going to go away. It's, for me, it was about the birds, but for somebody else, it may be the history or the architecture. And so there's a lot of reasons to save it, and that's what we're doing.